So the Daniel Bryan versus Corporation feud has taken another turn. And right now, I really, I don't know how I'm supposed to, like, review this because it, it's gone in so many directions. Triple H being ultimate heel, Triple H being babyface, Stephanie McMahon being a bitch, uh, big show, the title changing, everything has gone everywhere. And, like, I really don't know what to say because I don't know what's going to happen next. I mean, it's proving to be unpredictable. Like, it's going in so many different directions. Um, not that I don't enjoy it, I'm enjoying it a lot. One thing it has done though is it's it's left a lot more room for the WWE to fuck this um, thing up with like it's from it just like going everywhere and how they're going to bring it all back into one final thing and hell in a cell whenever this feud is going to end. I thought it was going to go in a cell, who knows now. I mean I'm lost, I'm lost for words with this feud. It's awesome. I'm excited for every Raw, every SmackDown. I can't wait for it. That's a good thing to see what's going to happen next, but I can't even bother to. I'm not even going to bother to predict anymore. So let me uh, just get to the show. Um, just a few matches that I want to talk about. I'm not going to go through every match because there's some that I really don't care about and I don't think my viewers will care about either. So I'm going to talk about the, the, the tag team match, the Whites versus the Problem Time Players. I just wanted to point out how it's the, the the push that the primetime players have been getting lately seems to be over. Um, they got their tag team title match, they lost that. Then they weren't even involved in the number one contenders match. Um, next, it was the Usos, Funkadactyls and Three Man Band, was it? Maybe there was another person there, but they weren't involved in it. Um, they've lost, I think, all the, they've lost, I think, all their matches since then since um, their loss at United Champions and now they getting put in matches like this where they're just getting like really just buried so the WWE gave them a push Darren Young's news has died down and so are the prime time players um, another thing I want to talk about is the Divas match now this bothered me like I understand I can see the WWE are pushing Brie Bella and see it by they're giving interviews with her um, she's winning all the matches. They are giving her a push. That's probably what's going to be the next the next Divas title match. Brie Bella versus AJ. Not Natalia like many people think. But to have Brie slam AJ's head on the ground and pin her after the match and going for like two or three minutes. It was just... I found it stupid. Like, they made it seem like AJ Lee is not even a match for Brie Bella. If they made AJ Lee seem like that person who fought Ryback. Right on SmackDown, I mean, to have your Divas champion, who's beaten everybody, she's beaten all the Divas basically, all the important ones anyway, she's beaten them all, and now you have a lose like that, like, like that, there wasn't like, she was fighting someone else, and then she got distracted, and Brie Bella was able to capitalize, or anything like that, um, it was just fair, like, AJ Lee attacked Brie, then Bree turns around and slams her on the ground, and that was that. The match was won. So yeah, that bothered me a bit. Um, like how they can have that happen, and how I expect AJ to go in a match and have it be competitive. I don't know, but let's see what happens in further weeks. Um, Justin Gabriel, I want to talk about. Um, um, commented last on SmackDown that he really needs to work on his acting. Now, he had the promo, that interview with Josh Matthews, Justin Gabriel, and Zack Ryder. Now, I don't think that that was scripted. I think that that they were just going to have an interview and say what Josh, and answer Josh Matthews' questions because I could see how Justin Gabriel wanted to say something. Josh Matthews went straight to Zack Ryder. Um, then he seemed to, like he was going to ask another question, and Justin Gabriel was like, no, I'm speaking. Justin Gabriel said he's thing and it was good. He sounded like he was just speaking, which probably means he was. He wasn't acting, or it wasn't scripted or anything, but still, um, uh, cut a good promo, and yeah, it was enjoyable. He got destroyed in the 3 on 11 handicap match, which is what I'm going to talk about now. 3 on 11 handicap match, like, this is helping Daniel Bryan. There's another thing about this whole twist of the of this whole feud with the corporation, what, what is going on? Okay, never mind about that. Shield start off strong, as I think many were expecting, knocks out the people who were injured, who had matches earlier. 
Um, I know that I've kind of gone, I've gone off topic because there's another match I want to talk about. Let me just talk about the main event and I'll go backwards. It doesn't, it's not important. Um, so the Shield have t- taken it down to three on nine, I think it was, and they lose Roman Reigns after he speared everybody. He speared Justin Gabriel after like three seconds. And that was the end of him. And um, but yeah, then it got to six on two, I think, and then it was six on five on one, something like that, with um, Dina, Dean Ambrose was under guy, Seth Rollins being the last one in. He tried to fight. He got one person out. Then Daniel Bryan t- spoke to everyone and they did the whole shield thing where they come, around, they circle around the ring. All got in the ring and just beat him down. Dean Ambrose got involved. Um, that sent everyone else out the ring to attack the rest of the shield who had come back after losing, leaving just Daniel Bryan. Yeah, Daniel Bryan and Seth Rollins and Daniel Bryan gets the victory and stands tall again. So, completely opposite to leading up to Night of Champions where Daniel Bryan is buried after every show. He has been winning and he has been on top every show since then. And he's really, really looking like He's looking unstoppable. But yeah, I forgot about one thing which I want to go back to, and that's um, with two things. Randy Orton did his whole thing with um, RVD, where he beat him up outside the ring after getting disqualified and just took him apart, same as what he did to The Miz. Speaking of The Miz, that's the other thing I want to talk about. WWE is two weeks in a row now, something that they love doing, taking the hometown hero, which in this week was CM Punk. And getting him beat up like anything. At one time I thought that maybe it was going to be different when CM Punk was fighting him off. But they the numbers game catched up. And Ryback threw him onto that table. Yo, like, it wasn't the most amazing throw. He just picked him and threw him. But the way it looked to me, it just was so deep. Like, I was like, whoa, when I saw it. Like, he lifted him like it was nothing. Like, CM Punk was just nothing. That's not the amazing part. Just the way that he threw him down, like it was like it wasn't a person. And oh no, that was that was quite something. I tell you, not often when you have tables and something involved that you you see it and you're like, oh, that was cool. But not often when you get that wow moment, which I got there. Um, maybe it was just me, but there was something about the way he threw CM Punk down that looked extra like like bad. I guess you'd say. So yeah guys, that's basically my raw review. I'm sorry I got a bit fumbled up there with matches, orders and everything. But I just kind of wanted to, I f- basically I'm freestyle this. I don't have a script or anything because there are th- matches that I don't really want to talk about. And they're not that interesting to me. And if I'm not interested, I don't see why my viewers would be interested. So basically I just switch on the camera, say what comes to my mind. And that way, what I'm talking about is something I want to talk about. So hopefully you guys will then in turn want to hear what I'm saying. But yeah, so sorry if I do do that. And if I do it in future videos where I mix up matches, orders or anything like that. It's all coming from the top of my head. So yeah, that's basically all. Cheers, guys.